So um, that was actually three years ago in 2016, so a lot has changed since then. Um, you heard me suggesting that crypto could be a hot topic, and a year later, mm -hmm. crypto was huge. So um, yeah, I, I share that because I think there's really strong fundamentals and a lot we can go back to. Um, but yeah, a lot has changed. So um, where do we stand now in Switzerland? Um, the background I'm not going to spend a lot of time on is Switzerland has always been a major financial center. Uh, the industry is hugely important to the national economy, uh, about 10%. 9% actually of the GDP is produced by the financial services industry. Um, and it's not as scary as it has looked at sometimes, but over the years you've seen a decline in that contribution to GDP. So we have to make sure that we're keeping uh, new things coming into the economy and, and moving forward. Um, so FinTech seems like a really natural place to be creating new opportunities, new jobs, the companies are growing and hiring people. Um, there's different ways of looking at how well that's going in Switzerland. Um, and I don't know if you've seen this before, this is a report by the Institute for Finance at the Hochschule Lucerne, um, and they say that Switzerland is number two, basically, in the world, which I think is great. Um, I'm not sure if I think that's totally accurate, um, but it's certainly a very high-ranking uh, hub. Um, there's a, a survey that we participated in, it's not quite as fresh, it's from 2018, uh, it's called the Global Fintech Hub Federation Report, it was done with Deloitte, and um, some of it's not the greatest visual quality, so I'm going to kind of highlight things for you. Um, they didn't like to rank because people get competitive and rankings aren't the most accurate, uh, but you can find Zurich was the one listed right here with a 41 score, and if you start to notice what the top ones are like, uh, where's Singapore, Singapore's down here, Singapore has an 11. New York has a 14, London has an 11. Um, the top tier global financial centers that you really see the most activity on are really in a different kind of stratosphere, quite frankly, in Switzerland. And one of the best examples of how I think you can distinguish that is the number of fintechs. Um, those hubs have, I would say, each over 500 easily. And in Switzerland, we're realistically about half that number. Uh, but we have a lot of really good things going on, and we are actually a very attractive global hub. Um, this one, you can't read. <laughs> But uh, essentially, they've gone through all the hubs and they've asked everybody to rank what their attributes are. Switzerland's especially hard to see because it's in gray as one of the old traditional financial centers. Um, that's an interesting factor as well, maybe just to pause for a moment. Um, you see a mix here of what are financial centers, like I started off talking about, and these new ideas of fintech hubs. Uh, and to show how that's something new, um, Israel is a fintech hub, it's not a financial center. Um, there's a few that are a bit of a mix, but there's some new places like Silicon Valley and Israel that are now um, coming out. Um, talking about the sort of factors that they're looking at, um, it's basically government support, innovation culture, proximity to expertise, um, the number of foreign startups, and the regulatory environment. And basically Switzerland has a very well-rounded high score in a lot of these features. Instead, I would recommend grabbing that report to find out a bit more. Um, one of the examples I think that it starts to highlight, or you could see in a little section they did on uh, regulatory sandboxes, um, Switzerland, one of the main features that we'll talk about in just a moment is the regulatory framework. Um, it's different in other locations in that I would say it tends to be a hands-off type of approach, or not a hands-off approach, it's a less is more approach. So setting out the minimum number of regulations that create the maximum amount of flexibility is really a strong principle here. And um, that comes to also creating sandboxes. In the UK, you see a very hands-on approach where the government has a large staff. They get involved and they see if you're an innovative company and they want to talk to you about what you're doing. Here in Switzerland, it doesn't really work that way. It's basically they've removed some restrictions for you for a longer period of time, and that's called a sandbox. So it's not always apples to apples. And you can see how in Switzerland, we sometimes take an approach of giving people space to try something rather than getting involved and really doing a lot of hands-on work. Um, and also I think this at first could look bad, but it probably speaks to the quality of regulation in Switzerland. These are all the global relationships, and the UK has basically been a hub for everybody. Everybody flies to London, talks to the FCA, and wants to learn how they're uh, regulating innovation. Um, Switzerland, I think, frankly, does a pretty good job, and they don't like to waste their time. They're very practical. Um, so they've set up one relationship, which is with Singapore. There's some other kind of government relationships with places like Hong Kong, um, but really the only one that they're doing regulatory knowledge exchanges with Singapore. And, um, if you get to know things a little bit, you realize that that's actually pretty smart. They're already in contact, and they have a pretty good basis with locations like London, and they just want to keep pace with some of these more innovative hubs as well. So um, they really keep things focused and, and do a good job of that. 
Um, I wanted to pause for 30 seconds to give you one other quick video. This is um, better than me saying it. I thought this was a really great example of an American entrepreneur, one of the really early companies that was in the Crypto Valley, and they put it dead simply. Um, I get asked all the time around the world, why Switzerland? And people would love to say it's about innovation culture and it's about um, you know our IT infrastructure. It really does actually boil down to things like regulation. We don't think we're gonna get in trouble. Um, taxes, it's more efficient to do business here in Zug and uh, independence. We're not mixed up in the US or in Europe. Um, and then frankly, location, it's in the middle of the world. So really fundamental things that don't change a lot over time are actually still the part that people find um, most compelling about Switzerland. What's interesting is that was a couple of years ago also, and or it was right in the middle of the start of the ICO bubble. And um, you can already hear people saying, you know, is this a good thing to have people coming here for these reasons, or should there be more substance to it? Um, what's really interesting to see is it didn't take a lot of regulation. The government hasn't done lots really to change it. They've tried to clarify some things and they've given opinions, um, but they haven't added tons of new regulation on things. Um, there's been not only 100 crypto companies start up, I think the numbers are like seven or 800 now, so it's a huge boom for Switzerland. We'll actually see that in just a moment. I'm gonna talk about the crypto story, but to, to kind of summarize it again as I was in that video, what I think Switzerland does really well, at least as an outsider I've seen Switzerland do really well, is blending tradition and innovation. Um, the, uh, the hub is attractive because you have these traditional sort of financial bedrock to it, but then you also have these really great stories emerging around technology that's disrupting things. Crypto has been a huge example of that. Um, the one I think is kind of a cheeky little twist on banking secrecy is data privacy. It was taking a CD with information, actually breaking data privacy, that was what caused the end of banking secrecy really. And it's also what in the future we can uh, have a value proposition around. If you're gonna think about where is my data stored, you know, this new Google Cloud in, in Switzerland is a great example as well of how that can be a part of the digital value proposition in the future. Uh, and AI is another example of that. Um, what's cool in the last year is that a lot of the numbers are now coming around to back up the interest that we had in the fintech topic and trying to promote it. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've seen the venture capital report, but this is done by Startup Ticker each year. Um, what's really neat is that for a long time, medtech and biotech were really the main story in Switzerland, and there wasn't really a strong contender for what could be another major sector in the startup scene. Um, and now if you look down here, you can really see the amount, 190 million almost, into fintech specifically, not just ICT, um, has become a real kind of strong sector for, for uh, the country as well. Um, you see it also in the number of financing rounds. There's actually just as many fintech rounds as there are biotech rounds, which is pretty cool because that wasn't the case five years ago. Um, so you really see it now in the results. Um, you also see it, this isn't a comprehensive list, but you also see it in the investors in the community. There's been um, a change. Uh, five years ago, one of the first things we heard when we surveyed the community was that there was no funding available. And I think Alex, you probably had interesting experiences at the angel round and having to go to meet different people. Um, I think nowadays it's probably easier at that stage because there's some really go-to types of players like Investira, SIGTIC, uh, Business Angel Switzerland, and some other ones. Um, that are really doing a great job of providing a target for early stage entrepreneurs to get their funding, to get support, as we'll hear from that. Um, and you also have a couple of quite high quality local VCs. Um, but what I always talk about is this funding gap in the middle of the life cycle of a startup when you need to go into growth funding. Switzerland's a small country, so you don't actually have a huge venture capital industry like you would have in Germany or in the UK, because it's not a huge market and there isn't that sort of connection. Um, so I think that's still gonna be an issue for a little while. There are some things happening around an entrepreneur's fund and some other things happening with pension funds, um, but that's kind of a bit of a gap. Um, one of the areas that's been filling it has been an explosion in uh, corporate VCs in the last two, three years in particular, two years really. Um, there's ones like Balois, who I believe do it as a partnership with Anthemis, um, but Six just launched, I think they said 50 million francs for uh, ventures. Tamedia has been active for years investing in things, even often in FinTech. Um, so great, great that we have uh, a strong corporate venture capital community as well. Um, I think the short story, maybe to tie the two together on Switzerland, is that um, in the past, really, it was much more of a story of more traditional financial services technology, how you enable the existing industry, how do you do things that were more vanilla. Um, what we saw in the last five years was this explosion of all the fintech companies, the startups, and I think really also specifically the whole Bitcoin and ICO topic in the last couple of years. Um, the question many people ask also is where do we go from here, right? Um, do 
ICOs continue to be a big issue? Is it the crypto winter? Are things going to come back? Um, are all these players going <coughs> to replace banks? Are banks going to acquire them? Um, there's still a lot of things left to be said. Um, so here are a few of my thoughts about what we'll see in Switzerland as we continue to go forward. I think you're going to see more. Um, every week you see more people leaving their banking jobs or coming from something else and starting a new firm. If you follow the Swisscom map each month, the number goes up and up and up and up. Um, so I think that trend will continue for the foreseeable future. Um, Switzerland has also continued to be a really attractive location. We see not only crypto companies, but some really solid international companies like WealthArc, uh, Adveron also has a really strong foreign presence. Um, and as we all know, the expat community here in Switzerland is a really strong group. Um, so you continue to see companies setting up here. Um, what's nice on the flip side is that we're starting to see more entrepreneurial ambition from Swiss companies. Um, certainly when I got here, there was more of a reserved attitude about uh, like pitching, for example. Uh, when we first started doing FinTech pitches, some of the local entrepreneurs didn't want to get up and talk about their business. Um, which was weird to me coming from North America, but you really have to learn about and respect and work with the the, um, the word of mouth and the quality product style to marketing that people prefer here in Switzerland. So it's kind of changed with that over the years. And now you see um, the Singapore FinTech Festival is a great example of this. Um, I'll show you the clips of it in the, after, in the later section, but it went from being, I think it was five FinTechs the first year we did it in 2017. And then the second year, the total number of companies was like 16, and I think 12 of them were FinTechs. So it doubled in one year, the number that we're going abroad. Um, this year, in a couple of weeks, we're going to Money 2020 with a nice group of startups as well. So there's actually groups you now going abroad and, and, um, and challenging foreign markets, which is really great. Um, and yeah, the other thing that's really cool in Switzerland is you have this strong corporate base. Um, you see that again here tonight. There's a really strong interest. F10 Accelerator is another big example, the Kickstarter Accelerator. Uh, the corporate community in Switzerland wants to engage with the startup community and help to foster it and benefit from it. Um, so we hope and we are seeing that it's maturing and not just superficial sort of innovation theater, but how can we really help to see more successful companies, more real deals being made, and customer solutions being rolled out. Um, and yeah, we've talked about it, but I think you'll continue to see it maybe around the blockchain space, maybe around some other areas, um, but you'll see more of these opportunities for industries to come together and it won't just be standalone traditional solutions for financial services or for renting or for loaning. Um, it'll be more connected digital ecosystem types of solutions that we haven't necessarily seen before. Well, thank you everybody. I hope you enjoyed it.